there's a really interesting way people are starting businesses now. Instead of raising cash from investors or their family or friends, they get the cash they need to start their business from customers. And, and in the new edition of the New Business Road Test just out, in addition to adding an app to collect road test data while you're out and about, I've written a chapter on this fascinating phenomenon and the different ways by which people actually get their cash from their customers and get their business started. Well, what I found in this research is that there are five fundamentally different ways, each different from the other, by which people do this. And, and the first way is what I call a matchmaker model. So a, a, an entrepreneur brings together buyers and sellers without actually owning what is bought and sold. Think eBay or Expedia.com. And because they don't own what's sold, you don't need to tie up capital and inventory or, or what you're going to sell and therefore it's very capital efficient to, buy the, to build the business because the, the buyers and the sellers fees cover the cash you need. So, so the second model that I've discovered is what I call a pay in advance model and it's where the, the seller of the goods gets the customer to pay some or perhaps all of the fee in advance. So think about remodeling your kitchen. If you're going to do that, you're going to have to pay the designer or the contractor something down. It's a long time practice, but entrepreneurs are using this approach in really interesting ways today. The third of these five models is what I call subscription models. That is the the seller gets the, the buyer to buy over an extended period of time. We buy cable TV this way, we subscribe to periodicals this way, we get Netflix this way. All of these are subscription models and because the customer pays up front and we deliver over a period of time, again we have the customer's cash up front. The fourth of these kinds of customer funded models is what I call a scarcity model. Most retailers, if you think about it, want to sell as much as they can of everything they sell as fast as they can. Zara, on the other hand, flips this upside down and limits the availability of any one style, both in time and duration. When it's gone, it's gone, so the customer is motivated to buy very quickly. These kind of scarcity models have led to the flash sales model that we see all around the world today and it's a fascinating way to get the customer to pro provide the cash up front by making the purchase and then the vendor, that the person who made those garments, for example, in the fashion industry, gets paid much later. So the fifth kind of these models is what I call service to product model, where the seller provides a service to you as a customer, then provides another similar service to another customer and so on. And over time, as those services build up expertise, it's often possible to flip them or package them into a product that can be delivered in a shrink wrap box or as software as a service without the services capability alongside. So let me give you an example of one of these 21st century entrepreneurs that's doing fabulous things with one of these models. Vinay Gupta, an entrepreneur in India, started a business called Vaya in 2006. He saw that the travel industry in India was changing. People had more income, there's a growing middle class, lots more discretionary travel, and the travel agent industry there was very outdated no real-time ticketing capability. So he said, what if I gave every travel agent a laptop that would connect into Sabre so they could actually issue real-time tickets? And what if I could give them better commissions than the airlines give them as well? So he found 200 travel agents, each of which he gave a laptop computer that was connected into Sabre. And for that, the travel agent gave him a $5,000 rolling deposit against which tickets would be issued. Well, do the math. 200 travel agents, 5,000 each in deposit, and he's got a million dollars to get the business off the ground. That business last year did 500 million in sales. Zero to 500 million in seven years. Would that be a good first, first uh, seven years for your new business? <laughs>